This is CC Kim. And this is Jim Bacho. For movies about music. That's right. And、um, I feel、uh, a little. Attacked. Not attacked. I feel like I feel when I watch a Korean movie. Which is what? Very heavy. So we just watched this movie. The Korean is Hei A Hua. Hei A Hua. Hei A Hua.、Yes. Mm-hmm. And the English title is Love Lies.、Mm-hmm. What does Hei A Hua mean? So in the movie, it's, it's about. Two singers, two friends, right?、Um, women who grow up together in a kisang house, right? A kisang is, for lack of a better explanation, I'm going to use this, God forgive me, is a Korean geisha. Right. Kisangs train to, contrary to a certain novel that a white man wrote about his fantasy about geishas. You're talking about memories of a geisha? Yes.、Um, <laughs> Contrary to what that book has sort of like instilled in our consciousness, there are actually. With a Chinese actress in the movie playing a Japanese geisha. Right, but that's not, that that's not the author's fault, though. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was but atrocious. It, it was atrocious. Everybody, any self respecting Asian will tell you that it's an atrocious novel and movie. But anyway. We're not here to talk about that movie. We're here to talk about another movie. Right.、Um, anyway, usually geishas and kisangs, they train to be really good at dance, song, and poetry, right?、Um, kisangs were known to be artists before escorts or you know,、mm-hmm. uh, people who keep men company. They are first and foremost artists. So usually they were, but you know, art was consumed mostly by men. Back then. Yeah, it's to the women are impressive in their、mm-hmm. skills as, as artists, which makes their way into men's hearts. Exactly. Which,、yeah. as this movie shows, is lies at their penises. But I wouldn't say that that is the core of the message. Of <laughs> But yes, that was, in, yeah, that was explained, especially if you are not. A top level artist, if you do not achieve a certain level in your、mm-hmm. artistry, then you will be demoted, sort of like, you know, you would be sort of like a lower tier kisang and you would end up mostly sleeping with these men. Right. Wait, that was implied in the movie. That was. It was. I, it, it wasn't well, implied. It was, it was explicitly. It was explicit、yeah. in the movie. So, in the movie, the mother of the Kisang house, right, who is actually the biological mother of、um, one of the girls,、mm-hmm. one of the singers, she explains that Heo Hua is another word for Kisang, and it means a flower who speaks. Okay. So, that、mm-hmm. was a line in the film. Yeah. And, and what happens. And of course, we're going to give spoilers as we always do in the movie.、Mm-hmm. I would encourage everybody to see this movie. It's a difficult movie、mm-hmm. to watch, it's very heavy. Which we did not know we whatsoever. Know. I thought it was going to be a cute movie about how Korean popular music transitioned from, like, you know,、mm-hmm. uh, t- the traditional form of song. Right. And then they, how they transit. Maybe it was like, you know, how Korean trot. Became trout、mm-hmm. from Enka, the Japanese Enka. I thought it was going to be a historical, like, you know. This is the, this is the <laughs> thing that I love about going into this, these movies not knowing because I didn't know where it was going to go. Because in my experience, Korean films that are dramas can go in a couple of ways. I don't mean to overly、mm-hmm. categorize them, but I was thinking this was going to be one of those which is going to be a romantic drama,、mm-hmm. wherein usually what happens is there's a man and a woman、mm-hmm. and they fall in love, or at least the first hints of falling in love. And then some, there's some incident、mm-hmm. that derails it.、Mm-hmm. And what happens is there's some misunderstanding,、mm-hmm. and the girl, or it could be the girl or the boy, but some, there's some misunderstanding. And then in the end, you realize that all of this was in order was to affirm the love、mm-hmm. of one for the other. Right. So that's right. very common in Korean films in a romantic drama. Right, right. And I thought it was going to go that way.、Mm-hmm. It went the other way.、Mm-hmm. And there's a history here of the Korean melodrama.、Mm-hmm. When it goes bad, it goes really bad.、Mm-hmm. And this is, this is that kind of movie, which is, I have to say,、mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I moved to Korea in 2007 and、mm-hmm. I watched a lot of Korean films.、Mm-hmm. And there was a period of time when I was really, yeah, watching a lot of Korean films. Korean movies do tragedy、yes. better than anybody. Like they've really taken the mantle of deep tragedy, which、mm-hmm. is somebody made a mistake. Right. So, this is different from a misunderstanding. Somebody made a mistake out of passion、mm-hmm. that derails 
everything. Right. And you're never going to quite recover. Right, right. Nobody's going to recover and nobody's going to be the same mm-hmm. after it. And it's it's very Greek. It's it's this heavy mm-hmm. tragedy where somebody fucks up mm-hmm. and everything goes wrong. But anyway, to get back to this title, mm-hmm. there's a moment in the movie, mm-hmm. and this is a spoiler thing, but not really, I guess, where she says, I thought I was supposed to be a flower. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what do you call the the woman who runs the, the Kisang? Let's call her a madam. Yeah, that's what because, I was kind of thinking, yeah. a madam. She says, darling, mm-hmm. a flower is meant to be picked mm-hmm. and put in a vase. Mm-hmm. So I think both of these titles are interesting because the English title actually mm-hmm. comes at the end, right. which becomes the song. Yes. And she kind of improvises it for the man mm-hmm. at the critical moment at the end mm-hmm. of the film that kind of resolves their relationship. What are you looking at? The plot, because I don't want to explain this plot. Let's get the basic idea of the movie so that um, yeah, so people I'm gonna can know read what we're it. talking about. I'm going to read it from okay, Wikipedia because I, I can't really even process this in my mind right now. It's a lot. I was not ready for this. I yeah. felt attacked throughout the movie because I was looking forward to a cute movie about some music history. <laughs> See, I, again, I thought it was mm-hmm. going to go in the first direction. Okay. So, Love Lies, Korean He Oh Hwa, is a 2016 South Korean period drama film directed by Park Hung Sik, reuniting the Beauty Inside co stars Han Hyo Ju, Chun Woo Hee, and Yu Yun Sok. The story takes place in 1943 during the Imperial Japanese occupation of Korea. In the film, best friends Chung So Yul, and Seo Yeon Hee are two of the last remaining Kisang. Although they enjoy pop music, they are committed to singing Jongga or classical Korean songs. Seo Yeol's life falls apart when her lover, pop music producer Kim Yeon Woo, falls in love with Yeon Hee and helps her debut as a pop singer. The story follows Seo Yeol's downward spiral as she is consumed by uncontrollable jealousy. Yeah. That's Would you good, think that that's a good... That's a very good synopsis. Okay. You I have a few so? thoughts about it. Basically, the last sentence yeah. is where the, all the tragedy unfolds and all of the trauma and all of the pain. Right. So I feel like there were two themes, two reoccurring themes um, in this movie about music, like two traditional Korean values about singing and popular music. And then there were also two themes in just the way traditionally Koreans thought about love. Okay, so the things about the the two themes about music are that you're born a singer. You don't work mm. towards it. Nobody can make you one. A singer for the people, right? Not necessarily like a traditional singer or whatever, a classical singer. That's totally different. But a singer for the people, a singer who does pop, you know, Korean pop, is born one and you just have it or you don't. That's it. You either have it or you don't. And then the other theme is that in order to become this singer, a singer for the people, you have to have something happen to you that is tragic. You have to have something tragic in your voice, a sadness or a certain like mm. Han, if you want mm-hmm. to say it, you know, if you want to use that word. Yeah, I don't I've heard, like I've to heard use... that term. When I first got to Korea, I heard, I heard Yeah, that so term. Han is like this, you can't really translate it into English. It's this... Way of being? Way of being. It's a grudge. It's a sadness. It's a sorrow. It's, it's you know, it could be like the Portuguese saudade or, you know, whatever. There are different interpretations for this, but basically it's you sing from the gut and you communicate something that is like indescribable. It can't be communicated. It's not about how skilled you are as a singer. It's, it's about, you know, having... I guess soul, right? Han is, mm. it could be interpreted as soul. Mm-hmm. Seo Yeon Hee, mm-hmm. she has that. Well, let's, can we stop there for a right. second? Yeah, so there are these two singers, they're best friends. Right. They've been bonding at this Gisang school. And again, this is where these women are trained to be servants to men, basically. Why are they servants? Basically, you spend time, spend quality time. Okay, maybe, ser- yeah, servant, yeah. I guess, is a strong word. Yeah, it's hard to get the right terms for what's going on. For me, this is my understanding of a key saying. This is, you know, just what I have read and heard all my life and what I have studied about the geisha and the key saying. They were women who are not your spouse, right? Let's mm-hmm. say you're a powerful Joseon dynasty man. Mm-hmm. Jim, can you imagine yourself in these in this position? Yeah, I live yeah. in Korea. Of course mm-hmm. I can. You're a powerful Joseon dynasty man. You have a simple wife who just takes care of your offspring, mm-hmm. does your laundry and, you know, makes food or whatever and bosses around the servants, the actual mm-hmm. servants, right? She takes care of the household. 
She is a woman of the house. But you have this elevated taste for poetry and music and art, right? And you want to have conversations with female company, but your wife would never be able to because she does not, mm -hmm. you know, and she will never appreciate your elevated taste yep. in poetry and philosophy right. and art and music. So you go to this geisha house mm -hmm. to have conversations with women right. about these elevated things that mm -hmm. your wife would not possibly understand, right. right? With this special class of women who are technically low class, they're lower class than you, but they have a acute understanding right. of these elevated They've been things, well trained, culture, yeah. right? The idea was never that you sleep with them, but right. I've heard, I've researched this, and apparently it wasn't entirely uncommon for them to, especially the older geishas, to end up being prostitutes, Yeah, right? And mm -hmm. the kisengs, the same, mm -hmm. that the, they would, you know, kind of graduate into a prostitute kind of status if they do not. Well, this was also addressed in the film that some of them do become yeah. straight up prostitutes. But I heard that it's only when you cannot when you make don't have the a talent. living... No, no, but also like even if you have a talent, like the next step as a geisha after a certain age is for you to be a kept woman. Mm -hmm, and right. if you cannot be a kept woman, then you end up being a prostitute in a very direct way, a mm -hmm. prostitute, because the geisha and the kisang lifespan is very short. Mm -hmm. And you also no respectable man will marry you. So you will probably become a kept woman, mm -hmm. like a mistress, right? Mm -hmm. So that is the economics behind it, mm -hmm. which I think is very important to address. Just to linger right. on that. Right. So that's why I'm having a hard time trying to find an English word for this. And I use the word servant. They're not entertainers mm -hmm. and they're not prostitutes, right. but they are in service to men right. in these situations. Right, right. I know servant has a strong connotation. I'm just right. trying to think of a word. A hostess. Okay. So this is yeah. what they call them in Korean, in yeah. English. And right. they also call it this in, in Korean, actually, mm -hmm. they say the word hostess. Hostess. Yeah. yeah. And there's hostess bars. And this kind of thing is going on in a contemporary mm -hmm. context in Definitely, Korea, and yeah. I've been to them. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if they're still going on during the pandemic. They're absolutely still going on. You think on. so? Yeah, yeah, this is the only business. This is the oldest mm -hmm. profession in Korea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I don't know where we left off. Yeah, I was saying that there are two themes about singing and music. Yeah, so these kisangs are supposed, they're training to sing traditional classical Korean songs, mm -hmm. right? One of them, Soyul, is gifted in classical singing. Right. And she has the man and, you know, the bright future because she's the best singer. She's the best pupil. Her mother, who ran the Kisang house, used to be a famous Kisang who mm -hmm. um, was famous for her singing voice. Mm -hmm. And so... You know, she's happy and she has her, her best friend, Yonhee, is sort of, she comes from very humble backgrounds. I think her father just sold her for 5-1. Yeah, right. Yeah, in the Rickshaw beginning. driver. Yeah. And she ended up in the same Kisang school as her only because Soyu insisted that she take the classes mm -hmm. with her, with mm -hmm. Yonhee, right? Because she took a liking to her. Mm -hmm. I think... She was feeling very good about herself, right? She was feeling very charitable. Oh, here's my poor friend mm -hmm. who's very loyal mm -hmm. and I have everything. Mm -hmm. I have the man. I have... And she was very kind of smug about her life in yeah. the very beginning of the film. Yeah. Oh, she was on top of the world at the very yeah, beginning yeah. as a little girl. Yeah. yeah. But also as sort of like a young adult, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, and, then, and growing up into that, yes. So the turn happens when she finds out that her lover, her boyfriend is actually a very famous songwriter mm -hmm. who's, who wrote all the songs that her and Yeonhee loved by the singer, this legendary Korean pop singer that they both worshipped. And so he takes her to the singer's house, right, to meet her. She sings a traditional Korean song in front of um, the famous singer. And then she calls... I thought it was calls, quite beautiful. It was very beautiful. And she did it a cappella. Yeah, it was very beautiful. I couldn't tell if it was uh, ADR, if it was dubbed. It, seemed it was like dubbed. She was it was? Okay. Yeah. It seemed like she was doing it live. The, the breaths were very realistic. Yeah, yeah. It, w it was definitely dubbed. Because that kind of singing doesn't just happen. Like, you know. well, I think it was even auto-tuned. Maybe. Well, yeah. you can do that later, though. Yeah. I mean, you, you can still le sing live in the room and then auto-tune it later. No, the but actress done... is not a singer. Oh, she's not? She's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really impressive dubbing. Then. Yeah. And so <laughs> she goes and sings this song and she, you know, like they hang out. And then she calls Yunhee because Yunhee also worships the singer. She was yep. like, you have to come over 
And then she has to go and perform in front of this like Japanese general.、Mm-hmm. And so she leaves earlier and Yunhee stays. It's at... not just that though.、Mm-hmm. It's one, again these key moments that happen、mm-hmm. in Korean films.、Mm-hmm. She says to her, You stay here, I'm going to go. She could have just gone back. They bo- both could have gone back、mm-hmm. together. Right. But she invites her friend to stay and meet this、mm-hmm. singer because they're both fans of this singer. Yes, I guess. yes. That's one of the turns.、Mm-hmm. We don't see what happens inside the house between right. Right. Yunhee and The other two. I think if we kind of bring it down to this, one of the girls is really good at traditional singing.、Mm-hmm. The other one is really good at pop singing. Right. And pop is starting to emerge. One of the interesting things in this film、yeah. to me was this colliding of tradition and modernity. Oh, that you brought up. Yeah, that's a great thing to bring so, up.、Yeah. So these girls find themselves, these young women find、mm-hmm. themselves at this collision, and one of them is gifted in traditional song,、mm-hmm. and one of them seems to be, as this composer finds,、mm-hmm. is gifted in pop music. Music and、mm-hmm. he's more in the pop music world. Right. We should say that he is trying to write this great song for the Joseon people. Yeah. Basically for the common people. And、yes. he does some great, there's some great dialogue、mm-hmm. that he gives about wanting a song for the people. Right. And he's a pop producer. Right. But he's in love with the traditional singer or he's、right. in a relationship with、yeah. the traditional singer. So this pop singer, her friend, comes in. And basically, she's the one that he realizes, and that the older singer also realizes, needs to sing this song. Yes. And so there's this really embarrassing moment publicly when this old singer says, I want to invite someone on stage, and she invites Yan He. Rather than So Yul.、Mm-hmm. It kind of takes off from there. And of course, so this composer guy falls in love with her,、mm-hmm. and that's how things go wrong.、Mm-hmm. The, the way the movie carries out from there is this collision of modernity and tradition. And like you were saying, singers gifted in two different ways. Yeah. And then there's also this theme of patriot, patriotism, too. Like, you know, it's like he's writing songs for the Joseon people、mm. and not the Japanese generals. Like, he、right. has a problem with So Yul performing for. You know, the Japanese. Right. And so he hears, in Yunhee's voice, he hears somebody who can sing for the people, the commoners. Right. And then in that process, he realizes that he's in love with this singer with purity and integrity, and also who is Korean to the core, right? Like,、mm. she, like this good Korean girl who has the voice. For the people, you know, I think that、mm-hmm. I, you know, I felt that theme. The reason、ready. why, yeah, the reason why this、mm-hmm. movie messes with you, or at least with me,、mm-hmm. is I the whole time assumed that we were supposed to be on So Yul's side. I never, I never, you never did.、That. Yeah. Okay, I thought we, okay,、yeah. I thought we did. First of all, because I got the two confused. I wasn't sure who was who, which was the peasant girl and which was the,、mm-hmm. I couldn't tell which was the woman. It was actually badly executed. Like, yeah, I they totally don't do that very well. Yeah, yeah. They, no, it was badly edited, or it、mm-hmm. was like somehow, like, there was some questions. Yeah, the editing yeah, in the movie, yeah. The、um, pacing and and and、yeah. they didn't leave room for things to breathe. It was very、times. confusing. Yeah, it was. During certain moments, like that guy, the the composer, like he just popped out of nowhere. And we didn't have any background. Yeah, like how did they get together? And there、so、was、you'll... nothing. Yeah. yeah. So I read on the Korean Wikipedia page、mm-hmm. that there was never supposed to be a love story. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. How do you do this movie without that? So it was about jealousy in terms of like so, it, the singing thing was the main、oh, interesting. and the main source of jealousy. And you know what? As I was watching this movie and during her most craziest, possessive, jealous moments. Okay, we should say was, that. So we should say that. So you'll things develop. Let's just、mm-hmm. say that. We don't want to get into There's a, lots of plot stuff that、mm-hmm. happens. She becomes kind of Michin. Yeah, like crazy. Gray, gray. Yeah. yeah. And so during her craziest moment, she, when she was talking to the guy who、yep. obviously doesn't want anything to do with her Which anymore. Which is when she sings the song. Yeah. I was thinking, men think that women are driven to this point because of them, but they are never, it's never about men. Right. And I knew it was about men. Singing. I knew it was about the music. You know, it's interesting, is yeah,、mm-hmm. they,、um, I mean, I don't, I don't, we can be critical of the、mm-hmm. film. I enjoyed the film.、Mm-hmm. I don't know if enjoyed is the right word. I thought it was a very well made film.、Mm-hmm. Um, I thought it was a gorgeous film. It's beautifully oh, yeah, shot. Yeah. The colors, oh my God, it shows soul、the、in costumes, 1943、yeah. or something. Yeah. Like you get this vision of soul that is idyllic. It, it's kind of like、um, you were saying, it's, it looked like Taiwan.、Mm-hmm. Like, Tainan, specifically. Like Tainan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because we were in obviously in,、mm-hmm. in Taiwan recently, and、um, it retains its Japanese feel, whereas、totally. Korea just tore everything Japanese. Yeah, we to wanted to forget about yeah, all of that. Yeah, for good reason. Yeah, so I was thinking, like, you know, there's no way a woman would go that far. Women are driven by 
their children mm. and like something else, but never men. Like they, you know, when they're driven to kill and when they're driven to like, you know, whatever, it's never really about men. Mm -hmm. I think for men, oftentimes it's about women, but for women, it's never, ever about men. Mm. And I've heard this said by many people and mm. I totally concur. And so this film got very bad reviews because of that storyline. And a lot of people were saying that like women would never go that far for the love of a man. But I don't think she did. I, That's see, what I, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I think, first of all, I, I didn't get a sense of competitiveness between them. Right. If they wanted to make that mm -hmm. the story, they didn't do it very well because mm -hmm. there really was, there was, but only after things are too late. Right. You know, there wasn't like a competition between the two of them. Mm -hmm. They were friends mm -hmm. and then they weren't. So you obviously wanted to be the voice of Cho Sun. Okay. So that's the thing. Yeah. yeah. And then Yunu chose Yun Hee for his project, yes. which was, you know, he was like, you're going to be the voice of Cho Sun over So you. And that's what ticked her off. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. And then she was trying to be like all nice and cool about it. Right. But then they hook up, Yun Hee and Yun Yunu. And she sees that. And she sees that. And that's when she like Loses goes it. cray cray. Yeah, she goes and then she like goes to the Japanese general who has been enamored with her. And he she becomes his mistress. Mm -hmm. And then she asks him to produce her record for her. Mm -hmm. And she copies her style. Right. And there's a chilling scene mm -hmm. much later when mm -hmm. she is crying, listening mm -hmm. to her friend's album, trying to copy her singing. Mm -hmm. style and she's crying the whole time through because she can't do it because she can't do it mm -hmm. so this is what this is what i find interesting in what you're saying mm -hmm. that you're kind of born the type of singer you are yeah definitely koreans say that a lot like you're just it's it's your palta which means that it was written in your stars like it was mm. you know they say this about artists particularly singers and dancers and they also say this about shamans okay that it's in your stars yeah yeah, yeah. wow you are given this role by some sort of God. Mm -hmm. You don't try to pursue it. Oh, that's really you, something. You are that. I didn't. I hadn't heard of this. Yeah, yeah, and then if you if you try to fight it, it will always come back. Yeah. Like, and you you will never ever be able to escape it. See, this is the other thing that I love about mm -hmm. Korean movies. There's always kind of this underlying theme that is part of Korean culture that I can yeah. understand a little, but I don't understand the depth of it. Right. And Korean movies are so good at this. Mm -hmm. I don't even know if another country's film really gets it mm -hmm. that to that level. Like, right. there's something going on. And just when you explain this to me right now the movie makes more sense yeah, to me. Yeah. We should talk about the composer Yoon Woo a little. Yeah. The actor's name is Yoo Yeon Suk. Okay. Do you know him? No, but Neither he's horrible. I. He was not good. That was one of the unfortunate things about yeah. this movie is he didn't carry it right. Right, and he had great lines. He had great lines of dialogue. This was a great part. But yeah. he was you could tell from the first scene he was awful. He was and, awful. And that ruined the trajectory because you just knew he was going to be awful. I really thought it was a joke. When he came on the, the screen, I was like, oh, this is going to be a cute movie. It's going to be a funny... You yeah, know, joke because of movie. the way he was carrying yeah. the role. I thought it was going to be... So here's what I thought mm -hmm. was going to happen. Yeah. I thought that the development of this film was going to be... Again, I mentioned the two types of mm -hmm. paths it could go. I thought it was going to go the first path. That he was going to choose Yun Hee mm -hmm. to develop this pop music. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, that So Yul is going to misunderstand. Because mm -hmm. he made this promise, this yakso. Right. To her that mm -hmm. he's going to make her the voice of the chosen people. I thought that he was going to nurture this younger singer, Yon mm -hmm. Hee, mm -hmm. and have So Yol think that she was out. Mm -hmm. But then he's going to, in the end, come back and make her the traditional singer. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he was going to foster this pop singer. Yes. But then at the end of the movie, mm -hmm. you know, when she thinks, mm -hmm. oh, I'm done, you know, and I have no part in his life and I have, I'm not going to be the voice. He comes back and he says, no, that was just a pop thing I was working on. You are the voice of the people. And here's the song for the people. Because that would be the happy romantic ending right, of a right. Korean movie. Right. No, oh, Like a very bad Korean drama. A very basic yeah. Yeah. Korean drama. Yeah. But yeah. we've seen these films yeah. all the time. Yeah. It ended up being a movie much more complex oh my and God. tragic. I felt so attacked <laughs> by this movie. And it got even crazier. It got crazier and crazier. It did. And, crazier. and she got crazier and crazier. And you yeah. know what's what her performance stunning. Yeah. And she played crazy, mm -hmm. so understated. Yeah. Like I didn't realize that she was crazy mm -hmm. until I started patching together actually what she had done mm -hmm. and what she was doing mm -hmm. and where she had come. Yep. Yeah, I, I recommend it. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's not a cute movie It's not about a cute music. movie, but it is mm -hmm. such a movie about music. We could talk about so many yeah, things. Yeah, it is such a movie about music. So I agree. Really, to me, the three elements of the movie uh -huh. are 
friendship, mm -hmm. romance, mm -hmm. and then music. Yeah. And how those things kind of intertwine with each other mm -hmm. in dangerous ways, this takes it to the nth degree. For sure. Yoon Woo, the producer, mm -hmm. has his interest in making music. Mm -hmm. And he's got this idea in him. He's, mm -hmm. got, he's got these songs in him and he makes these great songs. Mm -hmm. We've got the Japanese occupation. Mm -hmm. He goes out... With Soyol, they walk through, you know, the poorest parts of Korea mm -hmm. and they talk about, we need to talk to the common people and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. You know, so he's got this ambition in him mm -hmm. of being a great composer mm -hmm. and looking for his muse, looking for his singer. Mm -hmm. But he's in the relationship with the wrong woman. Mm -hmm. And he only realizes that until he hears the voice. Right. Now, this kind of shit happens. Totally. In relationships. Totally. In music. Especially it, amongst musicians. This is crazy accurate, like how that happened. And there's one thing I noticed about music, men in the arts, and obviously women too. Like there's this famous line in Amadeus, the movie about music, where the soprano singer says, Maestro, looks don't interest a woman of taste. Mm. Only talent interests right. a woman of taste, right? And that, I, I saw that movie when I was like five and that struck, that stuck with me. That's on our list. Yeah. And I think that the same goes for men. In my experience, talent does trump beauty in so many situations. Yeah. Yeah. And usually, you know, the talent is also nicely packaged in beauty, but talent <laughs> always yeah. trump, seems to trump basic classical beauty. Yeah. Or even like things that are good for you. I mean, mm -hmm. we see a lot of musicians get into relationship with other musicians mm -hmm. for the wrong reasons because they're musicians. Yeah. Also like the... The energy between like two people when you're making music together, mm, yeah, that it. can often be mistranslated into mm. like romantic feelings. Exactly. Yeah. Music is that thing where mm. it's ineffable, right? Mm -hmm. You can't talk about it. You can't mm -hmm. explain it. You can't express it in words. You feel it. And so when you're working with somebody, we talked about this in Mr. Holland's Opus, remember? Totally, yeah. It's this feeling that goes to a depth Mm -hmm. that transcends normal human relationships. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you're going to feel that and you can mistake those passions mm -hmm. for love. Mm -hmm. I mean, here, he just, he leaves her, but he doesn't really tell her, does he? No, he doesn't say shit. He like, she say, sees him. She sees it, but she doesn't yeah. tell him. No, I think it's implied that friend. it was over. Yeah, it was over. Yeah, they, see, this is yeah, another that way point. that the film didn't really handle that mm -hmm. well. There was some weird editing she decisions. Saw, because basically she saw him and then immediately became a prostitute. That's right. Yeah, she but cuts off her hair. But then there was no dialogue scene between them. No. Like, where did you go? There was no conversation, <laughs> yeah. Did we break up? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> And then them two just like sort of disappeared into the horizon with their album. <laughs> right. Oh, that album cover was cool, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, it, it was really cool. Oh, there's yeah. so many visually cool yeah. things in this movie. So I think we need to explain that this album does not come out. It gets burned by right. the Japanese. It, it gets burned because um, it's called, the song is called The Heart of Chosan. Right. And it's obviously like some sort of like emancipation propaganda, you know, it's, well, it's interpreted kind of like, as they, yeah. like there's a scene where he sings uh, Ari Ari, you know, the Arirang, Arirang sorry, yeah. on the piano yeah. and, and gets himself arrested. Yeah. Uh, not because he played Arirang, but he got into a fight with well, a Japanese I know, but, soldier. Yeah. yeah. But it's the song that he's playing. Yeah. He's, he's basically saying, fuck you with the piano. Right. So there's a patriotism element to this movie. Yes, for that's, sure. that's where I was yeah. going. And, and it was really intense. Like, he was patriotic. Mm -hmm. I think that at a fundamental level, he did not respect Soyul's profession because she performed for Japanese right. generals and, you know, these important people. You'd think there would have been a dialogue scene or something to give that... Right. Before he hears Yonhi, right. he is like, you need to become the voice of Chosan, like mm -hmm. the heart of Chosan, right? Mm -hmm. And you need to sing for your people. Mm -hmm. But he hadn't really heard her sing, like, popular music, his own mm -hmm. songs. And he just assumes that she's going to be good at it. And he is like, you're going to be my singer, my muse. Mm -hmm. But then he hears Yeonhee sing and he switches over. Okay, so the other thing that they didn't do well in this movie was I assumed that this song mm -hmm. was going to be done in a traditional style. That's why I said that what I said before. Oh, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. They didn't make it clear that they wanted a pop song. I thought it was clear. Okay, yeah. so maybe this is it. Yeah. Because I'm thinking anthem. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking like traditional. No, no, no. So there's another thing that I need to probably explain is that popular music even now in certain social circles 
They are very much frowned upon. Even up to the 90s, it was something that you will never be respected if you do it,、mm. no matter how successful you are. My grandfather was a piano player for popular music, right? He used to perform for like the American military and he was、um, like a trot. You know, he, he would accompany singers, popular singers. My grandmother just never got over it. She was just like, you know, we come from like the worst background possible because your grandfather is a musician, <laughs> <laughs> you know, of all things, right?、Mm-hmm. And not to, you could be a classical musician, that's elevated, that's、right. respected, but you cannot be like a pop music、mm-hmm. musician. And this was so deeply embedded in your psyche. In our psyche, I think it only recently took a turn. Like, you know, we now we celebrate our pop stars a little bit too much.、Mm-hmm. But this was so embedded in the Korean, you know, psyche that like it was actually like something that was very risky to do. Like, you know, even if, you know, a key saying is not something to be desired, but also like you, you were risking going even lower in your social status by becoming a pop star. So she was reluctant. Right. How did you think the music was represented in the movie?、Um, very weirdly, because I have a hard time believing that that was the sound of the 1940s, like whatsoever. That sounded more like pop in the 1980s. Really? Yeah. Even like the singing styles were just like completely unheard of during certain. It almost like, seemed main... like it preceded the pop music of the、yeah. United States. Yeah, I was like, what the hell are you talking about? Like,、mm. that was not. Yeah, I don't know. Those n- instruments, of us... the instrumentation, like, didn't make any sense. Well, the instrument, it, it kind of didn't make sense. And、yeah. I was wondering about this, but、um, mm-hmm. like, I was kind of fascinated by it. And I'm, I al- always trust a film, you know,、mm-hmm. until I know otherwise. So I, I don't know, but like, when they were tracking the pop song,、mm-hmm. there was an upright bass,、mm-hmm. a violin,、mm-hmm. and an acoustic guitar,、mm-hmm. which is a really weird、yeah. configuration. Yeah. There's no way that would have been the configuration. Yeah. I don't, I don't care how modern he thought he was.、Yeah. That, like you said, it even preceded、yeah. the pop music right, right. in the United States. That didn't make any sense. Well, with the traditional music, it was right. You had、yeah. the, you had the、yeah. gaigam、yeah. and the flute,、uh, the, yeah. the, the, the tegum. Yeah.、Like. But yeah, the pop music, it seemed a little suspect.、Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, no, no. That, there was no accuracy in the representation of like, what could have been a, a hit song、yeah. in the 1940s. That said, I did like the performances, I liked、yeah. the music. Yeah, I like the music. Both、too. the traditional and the pop music.、Yep. And I love the space in、mm-hmm. which we heard these songs.、Mm-hmm. And you said that this bar、mm-hmm. where they were performing、mm-hmm. the pop stuff,、mm-hmm. that that's an actual bar yeah, and yeah. soul. Yeah, yeah. I think that was an actual bar and soul.、Um, I also recognized that palatial place that the Japanese people were kind of working. Like she was recording, Soyul was recording her yeah,、right. album. I, I also recognize, I think that was like, I think it was a wedding hall in Seoul. Oh, okay. They obviously spent a lot of money on the set that they built to look exactly like Tainan. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, the set design was incredible.、Yeah. It was very clean. It was very clean. There was no way that in the 1940s in Korea, people. I suspect it was a little was dirtier that than that. Yeah. yeah. But in the opening scene with the cherry blossoms in the Kisang house,、mm. that was beautiful. It was. And I'm sure there were moments like that back And then. And I love, I just love movies like this, like these idyllic things. Movies about music. I just have to say, kind of like, again, I've talked about how I, I really do like Korean movies because I live in Korea and it's a、mm-hmm. different culture for me. And these things that I kind of pick up.、Mm-hmm. I remember this is going to sound like a strange thing to say, but I remember going in Seoul, I went to like an old style. You know how they, they do these recreations of these、mm-hmm. neighborhoods,、mm-hmm. you know, and you can go see the architecture and the old architecture.、Mm-hmm. And then somebody there was explaining to me how here's on this side of the house, you have the doors that open up. And then you go to the opposite side of the home and you have the doors that open up and it creates a breeze that comes through. Yeah. And then I went home and I looked at my apartment and I was like, oh, we've got this. Oh, everybody has the same thing. Totally.、Yeah. It's, it's this breeze thing.、Mm-hmm. And so I just love that kind of stuff. It's called mat param. Oh, okay. The The wind has to hit each other. Right.、Like、they have to meet each other. Right. Yeah, from both sides. Yeah. So I mention this because this movie, you got to see things that are very old that carry forward into today. Yeah. yeah. Which is、mm-hmm. the hostess bar.、Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. So、Definitely. this is the early,、yeah. like you were saying, the early version of the hostess bar. And、mm-hmm. I've, I've done the hostess bar thing.、Mm-hmm. 
Is that okay to say? Yeah, it's not illegal whatsoever. It's not I mean, illegal. it is kind of, but like you're not going to get into trouble. I won't get into it. details yeah. about what goes on, yeah. but yeah, it is kind of like a it's a it's a gentleman's situation. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You sing songs mm-hmm. and you drink whiskey and beer mm-hmm. and eat anju, you mm-hmm. know, and then you can have these girls come in and be your partner for mm-hmm. a little while mm-hmm. for the time that you're there, mm-hmm. and they will joke with you and they will talk in the low language. Mm, okay, as if you're They're in. Girl- in friend. high school again, yeah, yeah. because again, you have your wife at home mm-hmm. who doesn't understand you and you can't talk to her mm-hmm. anymore, like you were saying before. Mm-hmm. And here's someone who's going to tease you and make fun of you right. like you're 18 years old again. Mm-hmm. I f- went to my first hostess bar like mm-hmm. on day three in mm-hmm. Korea mm-hmm. and it blew my mind. Mm-hmm. And I felt like I'd done something very wrong. <laughs> doesn't it feel even more wrong than if you went to a prostitute? Like there's something about that dynamic that I find even more disturbing here's, than here's, the simple transaction of sex and money. Right, right, yeah. right. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Again, I don't know how each woman feels about it. I don't know. You know, I don't know how a prostitute would feel compared to right. I girl. wouldn't know either. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the thing that's very disturbing that I didn't like is these girls would s- sometimes sometimes you just they just walk in and sit next mm-hmm. to you. Other times you got to choose. Mm-hmm. And so they'd stand there like a line of five girls and you picked one that I didn't like. Right. That made me very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Of course, you're drunk and you're getting into it and it's fun, but it's a very vapid fun. And I, you know, obviously I'm constantly wondering if this is wrong, mm-hmm. but it's also for me like an interesting cultural experience. Right. You know, watching this movie, I was remembering those, yeah. those times. It's so deeply embedded in our it culture. Is. Uh, we live in the most, one of the most patriarchal countries. Mm-hmm. In the world, according to a lot of studies, yeah, yeah, Korea has the has one of the highest gender wage gaps, mm-hmm. widest gender mm-hmm. wage gaps. So all kinds of horrible to be a woman in Korea. Mm-hmm. For it's a man's world. For so sure. many ways. Yeah. The thing is, we're being gaslit. We're the, people won't even acknowledge it. Men will not say that it is horrible mm-hmm. for us. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I would get into trouble if I said this on a Korean podcast. They would be like, "Oh, you dirty feminist," because feminist is now like become a derogatory. That's term. starting to change, though. I yeah. think. Yeah. Well, a little bit because there are more of us, and mm-hmm. we're like right. making so much more money than y'all right. and like you know, <laughs> and and we have our host bars even yeah that's true and you know this is weird because i now have the option and the buying power to go do unspeakable things at host bars and to pay men to lick my boots like literally <laughs> no literally i i have heard of unspeakable things that are not even sexual going on mm-hmm. in these host bars because women you know they go and they have this vengeful sort of right, like right. spiteful mindset yeah. and they're like we're just gonna demolish the patriarchy we're gonna take mm-hmm. out all of this you know stress from the patriarchy on these poor 20 something men yeah. who are doing this who are for probably money. getting paid yeah they're big, they're getting paid mm-hmm. um a lot yeah but some of the themes that remain like yeah you know like when i would go to these places you know the girls would sing mm-hmm. songs mm-hmm. and yeah we would sure. watch yeah, them yeah, yeah. And I've also I've even been to ones like some really high class ones where they mm-hmm. do like the Andong mask dance or they'll right, play an right. instrument yeah. or something like that. That was probably an actual Kizang house. It a actually was. Kizang Is house. that okay for me to say? Totally. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. part of our culture. It's yeah. a cultural heritage thing. So I've been to one of those. Yeah. yeah. And for me, even though I have that option, I don't do it. Mm-hmm. There's I have no interest in going to a host bar whatsoever. I also think that it's not the same. Just because we have that, it doesn't make it okay. I always wondered Mm -hmm. how much of it was acting and how much of it was enjoyment. Mm -hmm. Because in my experience, they seem to really enjoy it. But again, is that the performance? So I heard and read like several testimonies. It is 100% acting. Yeah, I was never sure. 100% professionalism Mm -hmm. and they hate it they hate it so much that they're they're, the suicide rate is really Mm. high the rate of them being on prescription drugs Mm. a lot of these women are probably on antidepressants and anti-anxiety pills while they're on the job well now i feel bad no it's fine it's you know it's just that's how i got all my contracts resigned yeah (laughs) i had to go out and do this 
I mean, I never went out seeking a hostess bar. It it was always something that was part of the contract negotiation dinner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you know, that's just what you. I don't know if it's okay to say that. That's totally fine. I mean, it's totally fine. I think this is very. This might be very interesting for. Yeah, I think so too. That's why I wanted to talk about it, even though it has nothing to do with music, or actually, it has a lot to do with music. Well, the the (laughs) The some of these performances, you know, and and that happens too. Is yeah, I think I think that women are constantly in this situation (laughs) where they are expected to perform oh for sure yeah. for men in uh-huh. order to make money well also like period perform yeah, 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 for yeah, yeah, men yeah, yeah, period yeah, yeah it's, it's a constant constant right. performance you know i keep bringing this weird thing up in our marriage that you have a hard time understanding which is i need a day by myself i don't have a hard time understanding that yeah. i understand that 100 percent. you know it's gotten really obnoxious and i feel really bad because you're like the gentlest most understanding man ever but i need a day of non-performing because when i go out that door i am 100 percent performing for the patriarchy Mm -hmm. when i work with women it's different it's definitely different Mm -hmm. and there's an expectation that men have especially in korea that i will do this song and dance for them Mm -hmm. metaphorical song Mm -hmm. and dance Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's a literal song and dance Mm -hmm. in my profession But yeah, there's definitely a performance, even on the phone. Yeah. And it's just, you know... I, I hear you perform on the yeah. phone. If you don't do it, the consequences are severe. Mm-hmm. You have to deal with financial loss, mm-hmm. lost opportunities. You have to play the game. Yeah, you really have to play the game. And it's different for me than it is for my male colleagues. True, right. But they will deny it. Well, sure, this is how power works. They're, they're trying to hold on to their power and hopefully things change. Mm-hmm. And probably not. Well, I don't I don't, I don't, don't think that's true. <laughs> I think that they will. I, I think that yeah. things are progressing, even though it's ugly right now, that, that the that kind of the steps, that the strategies that have been done to try to progress some of these issues toward equality mm-hmm. have been really really messy and very badly done. Probably, yeah. I think. But I think in the long run, there will be... The striving, I think, is important. The, yeah, yeah, the thing is, like, I rem- remember the show Mad, Ma- Mad Men. Did you yes, ever watch the yes. Mad Men? So I was in Korea when that show was going on, the first time I was in Korea. And I remember watching that show and saying, you know, it takes place in 19... 1950s. Late 50s yeah. as it goes into the early 60s. And I remember thinking, this is Korea. Yeah, the show a lot is of people exactly said that. Korea. Yeah, a lot of people said that about right that now. Thing. Yeah, yeah. The 1950s Korea is like the 2010s in Korea, and that's why men like me had such a good time. Yeah, yeah. And you're having a bit of a harder time now. Yeah. <laughs> Perhaps as it should be. Yeah, well, I'm glad you understand that, though. Of course. Like, that's, it's really nice and encouraging to hear you acknowledge it. But I, there's another phenomenon that I would like to touch on before we wrap okay. up. It's a weird byproduct of the patriarchy. I've heard this emerging in the States now, and I recognize this as a phenomenon that has always been there in Korea from, like, the 90s, which is the phenomenon of the himbo. Did you hear about what this? What is this? It's a he bimbo. What it's is, a male oh bimbo. God. It is a okay. beautiful young man mm-hmm. who is very, very nice and gentle. Oh, we did we did talk about this. Yeah, but completely unaware of his own beauty and his his effect and his power on women. Completely unaware. Okay, mm-hmm. and he is just a jolly bimbo. Like he doesn't have any aspirations. Mm-hmm. He just wants to like cook for you, whatever. Go to the gym. Mm-hmm. He has no interest in like dominating you Mm -hmm. he just wants to please people he's just having a good time because he's beautiful Mm -hmm. healthy he's young (laughs) and so apparently this is an emerging trope in the states okay but the first requirement for a himbo is that you can't know that you're a himbo like you have to be pure okay so what what's what's the connection there the connection is that this trope in my opinion has existed in korea as a byproduct of the patriarchy for so many years i have seen it on men or on women women love himbos korean oh, women I see what you're saying. are in love with pretty men because they feel like they have been so abused on a daily basis by the patriarchy right they don't go for the powerful you know they you know yeah there will always be women who want to like you know date powerful men mm-hmm. marry them whatever mm-hmm. But deep inside the Korean woman, there is a desire to love a puppy-like young man because it's the alternative. It is the sort of like the 
antidote to this abuse that they suffer from these like disgusting mm. powerful men mm. right this is why you turn on the tv you see mm. the most beautiful korean men mm. wearing makeup mm-hmm. and dancing and singing right. <laughs> this has been going on since the you know since the 80s right. the himbo energy is strong mm. with interesting um, a lot of korean superstars All right. I kind of want to give a hint to what our next podcast is going to be. Mm -hmm. And I I promise we're not going to call an audible on this one. We're going to do this. We are going to do an Oscar special. Yeah. Yeah. So we've been thinking about this and we've been trying to watch as many of the Oscar nominated movies Mm -hmm. as we can. We are going to talk about the films we've seen, Mm -hmm. which don't necessarily have to do with music, although some Mm -hmm. of them do. And that's going to be kind of half the show maybe. And then the Mm -hmm. other half of the show, we're going to talk about a movie that is nominated for several Oscars, and that is Coda, which is a movie about music that came out last year. All right. What is Coda about? It's about, see, I'm not exactly sure, but it has something to do with music (laughs) and people who perform music. Okay. Let me read you Mm -hmm. a log line, as they call it in the industry. Coda is a 2021 coming-of-age comedy drama film written and directed by Sian Heder, and I promise I'll get that pronunciation right next time. The film stars Amelia Jones as the eponymous Coda. Ah, Coda means child of deaf adults. Okay, that's it. The only hearing member of a deaf family. Okay. And of course, Marley Matlin's in it because Marley Matlin is in every movie about deaf. Is it a remake of a French film? Because there was a French film exactly like this. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's an English language me- remake of the French language film La Famille Bélier. Yeah, La Famille Bélier. Yeah. From 2014. So there we go. Thanks for listening to Please. that tirade of mine. No, no, about no. The that patriarchy. wasn't a tirade. No, that was great. <laughs> okay. that pe- listen, people are going to love it. You know, we would love if you would review us. Mm-hmm. I know I say that very often, but we yes. would really like it if you would give us a positive review. We give are, us some stars. Yes. And we are also on YouTube now. Yeah. We're kind of, we're, we're across multiple platforms now. Right. And we started a YouTube channel so you can also listen there. Mm-hmm. I don't upload them right away to YouTube. There's mm-hmm. a little delay there. Mm-hmm. So if you want to listen on the podcast, it, I, we still put it out the yeah. podcast first, but we do have a YouTube channel mm-hmm. now. And maybe we'll try to put up some some videos well, yeah, so give us a little follow. Yeah, so please follow our channel. Yeah, and on uh, Instagram, too, if you want to check out the previews. and Yeah, and our Instagram is at Movies About Music, right? Yes, and our YouTube channel is Movies About Music. That's right. All right, take care, everybody. Take care. Under the moonlight, I'll sing you a song So you'd magically feel a love that's alone Hopefully, they'll live eternally If we paint ourselves all bright with stories Of heroes and poets and sadness and war Of immeasurable pain, unconditional love Movies about music